Hello everyone and welcome back to another spooky adventure. I'm here with 13 Nights of Halloween. I'm once again joined by Ignit. And... Ohio! Oh, epic gamers! <laughs> okay, there you go. There was the... I was like, what? <laughs> you haven't said anything yet. I really hope to at least make it to round four. Let's do it. We're back with more Monster Party. Parody World Monster Party. Uh, again, I, I did you. preface the beginning saying that this game is fucking hard. So... <laughs> Yeah. And this is the a Japanese, like, never-released version, so it's actually, I think, slightly a little bit messy, which is why I can't actually farm the health. I think in the English version you can totally farm health, but I think in this one it cuts you off at a certain point. So, no excuses, but I am making excuses. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, we're grinding tonight, dude. We've made four videos. I know. It's crazy to think about. Four, wait, four videos. Oh, yeah, we did, man. Yeah. Dude, I, I, mean, <laughs> from being, I, I don't know if people can hear it in my voice, but this idea of getting 13 guests has been <laughs> one of the hardest things I've done on the channel in a very long time. It's hey, bro, not I can easy. come back and I can come back under the alias of Ignit Vegeta for the old time's sake. Oh, there's, yeah, a, cool. there's two for one. <laughs> Go back. Well, I have the 13 guests. The problem is, um, I didn't realize the toll it would take actually recording those videos. So I have, like, been making <laughs> three to four videos a day, basically, trying to, um, get stuff ready for Halloween. And it's tough, man. And then at some point, Zen also wanted to make a Yu Gi Oh! channel, and I wasn't about to say no to that because it sounded awesome. So, <laughs> that's Yu Gi Oh! So channel. Yeah, Tag Duelist. You can check out Tag Duelist. Um, it's just been a what lot is of work. A, Go ahead. What's the um, Master Duel? Is the one that's coming out for like PC and stuff? Mm hmm. We're currently yeah. fighting each other playing Yu Gi Oh! Omega, which is pretty funny because Yu Gi Oh! Omega is Master Duel, but now without all the fancy effects. So, yeah. You know, it's pretty nice, but I'm in terms of just having every card available and being able to play, it does functioning pretty good. But I'm also can't wait for that new Yu-Gi-Oh game. It's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, I gotta oh, I gotta redeem myself because I gotta beat Swag Kage. Because uh, we played uh, seven duels like a year or two ago, and he mopped the floor at me. I got one win on him, but <laughs> we're just gonna ignore the other six losses. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. No, I'm. Um, a lot of the video so far on Tag Duelists have been just Zen beating me. Until recently, <laughs> where I finally made a deck that uh, has made him have the same troubles that I have. Damn you, West Side Dracula. I'm going to get you one of these days. There we go. Uh, the, the, the main problem with Yu-Gi-Oh! is that if you're fighting a guy with a better deck, you will know immediately. Like, the amount of shit that yeah. he can do to you on turn one, compared to the stuff that you can do to them, it does not exist. <laughs> it's like a complete stomp. All right. Done farming here. Let's go. But yeah, I get that and get some revenge, man. There's nothing better than some cool, sweet Yu-Gi-Oh! revenge. What deck were you running, do you remember? I'm Blue Eyes. I'm a Blue Eyes whore. Anything Kaiba I love. <laughs> did, you, did you see that new, um... They actually released Blue Eyes support a little while ago? Did they finally? Yeah, they released some more. They do it every couple of years, but they released the jet. So the blue eyes white jet, the 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 jet that Kaiba flies in. <laughs> you can totally that's a card that you can totally run now and you can get blue eyes that way. So I think I found the strategy with this guy is that if you keep going back and forth, he won't he won't like advance towards me, you see? Shit. <laughs> Never mind. I'm full of shit. <laughs> now it's becoming a battle of just kill him now. There we go. Whew. Take a rest, buddy. Take a rest. I think you deserve it. This man's tired. <laughs> this is the face of a man who just came back from a 16-hour shift and is done with his day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Okay, only two hits. I think that's perfectly fine. There we go. Look at that. We took a slight break. And I'm beating the shit out of these umbrellas. They got no chance. 
Just like Vince McMahon said, you got no chance. <laughs> oh. oh, come on. I'm trying to see if they have health or something before I go inside that door. Anything? No, okay. Let's see, is this the final boss I need? You lose. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. What? Man, I love Halloween <laughs> and stuff like this. It's a shame I never had Monster Party as a kid and I could only experience it through emulation stuff. I would love to have actually owned this as a kid. Yeah. It's one of those things where, like, you play these games when you're older, and then you're like, man, where the fuck was this when I was a kid, bro? <laughs> Why didn't yeah. I play this before? I f yeah, I felt like that so many times, especially as a kid. I don't think I actually... I rented a lot of my games, like, from Blockbuster. Um, so I didn't really actually own many games until I think the GameCube era, and that was around the time my dad did his self-imposed exile from Blockbuster because he was slighted by Blockbuster, <laughs> and so he needed to <laughs> stop supporting them. Uh, there we go here. Let's see if there's anything. If there's nothing in here, I think I'm fucked by all these umbrellas. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, God. This is maybe the most... <laughs> it really was a trap. Umbrella bat. Yeah, umbrella versus bat. Um, but we definitely had an NES growing up, but I think it was my my aunt's, so we only got to really play Mario on it. I think Mario 3 was the only game on that NES, and that was enough for me as a kid. It was not really much yeah. more you needed to own on a NES, if, to be honest. Back in the day, if you had, like, the Mario or the Sonic of the console, you were good. And then, Pretty much, yeah. Just We played those games for, like, 20,000 hours. They still sucked at them. Because he didn't yeah. understand what we're doing. Oh yeah, there were some games that were literally needed to be played multiple times in order to actually function at. I need to see if any of these drop health before I start being a dumbass and going into places. God damn it. What about you? Oh damn it. Get away, Westside Dracula. Alright, there we go. Transform form X. It is a giant spider. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not a fan. He's smoothing. He is smoothing. He's moving like a fucking Nick All Stars character. Damn it. I died. <laughs> Try that one more time. Yeah, I was not expecting that. Maybe I think that would have been easier if I had my final form, but it also would have been easier if I had any form of health or anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, that would that would be very helpful, yeah. Honestly, clutch. Let's go into it. I want to at least see what the next world would look like. But I did, again, preface this saying this game is not easy. <laughs> it is hard, but yeah. it is, I think, fairly hard. Whack. Whacking the skeleton with my. Here's a random question. Do you play Persona? I think I remember you talking about Persona before. Mm -hmm. I used to. I well, played Persona. You... Um, I think I still need to play Royale. Um, but just to oh. show my specific um, love for Persona, the only reason I didn't play um, Persona Royale is because the PS5 is in my brother in the in where my mom and brother currently live at, sleep at. And I don't want to bother my mom by playing Persona 5, <laughs> so I'm just waiting till we get into my own place, and then I will gladly play Persona F Persona 5 Royal. I beat Persona 5 regular. I've owned. I started playing it on like the PS2. Like I read about Persona 3 um, in a magazine, in a gaming magazine back when those were still a thing, and they were like, "Oh yeah, you're like, it's like a simulator where you live your Japanese life, but then also it's a JRPG." And it's hours long, and I was in high school going, that shit sounds awesome. <laughs> let, me, let, yeah. me, let me go get that real quick. I'm dealing with my own high school shit, but let me deal with some Japanese high school shit. So I've yeah. Playing, so I've been playing the series since, um, since 3. I'm one of the very few Persona Persona fans who's also played 1, 2, and 2, 2. So I'm deep in it. That's my level of Persona. I absolutely love Persona. I don't say it as much because 
now there's much more Persona fans. And I feel like back in the day when you were a Persona fan, it was a very different stigmata as opposed to it is now, where it's much harder to yeah. be a Persona fan. But I was say, why? I was gonna say, what is your favorite Persona fan and why is it Royal? They said you didn't play Royal, now I'm sad. Nah, I'm sorry, I haven't played Royal yet. I heard that it improves in a lot of things in 5, which I'm looking forward to, because I, I really liked 5, but some of the endgame in the regular Persona 5 just kind of falls off a cliff. <laughs> I think it's a fair dude, assessment dude. of that. Um, I, I need you to play Royal ASAP, dude. Royal is like my favorite game of all time right now. It's the, really? just the stuff they, the third semester is so good. Peak fiction. Absolute peak fiction. Like, uh, for example, <laughs> I think this is the, the best endorsement you can give to um, Persona 5 Royal. I think Toast, who has notoriously been one of the most vocal Persona fans in that he loves this series so much and he also hates it at the exact same time. Yeah. <laughs> he, he played Persona 5, said it wasn't the greatest, even though he was like, he loved it. He's like, that sucked, even though he loved it. And then when he played Royal, he's like, yeah, that's the game. That <laughs> That's the one. And I was like, damn, that good? He's like, yeah, that good. All you need to be said. <laughs> so. Yeah, Royal is, dude. Because uh, I recently moved states, and when I came here, the first thing I did was play Royal, because... uh. My now friend lived like seven minutes down the road from where I am now. And uh, he had Royal. I was like, yo, I never got to play it. Let me get that. And then I stole my roommate's PS5. And I sat in the living room for 16 hours a day for a week straight just playing that game. It's wake up, Damn. play the game, go to sleep. Wake up, play the game, go to sleep. Uh, let me tell you, I wish I could do it again for the first time. It was so good. I believe it. Let me tell you, when a good persona hits, you spend like... Days. I think I still have my original PS2 save file for 3 and 4, and in both Persona 3 and 4 I spent on the PS2, again, I'll say on the PS2, a thousand hours both. And on the PS Vita version, because I bought a Vita specifically just for Golden, um, 500 hours just playing the Vita version. <laughs> Like, there was a time in my life where I would replay every Persona game at least once a year, fully, all the way through. Like, no stop, nothing. And, uh... So, rank, rank them. What's your favorite ones in order? And I think, again, oh man, that's tough. For me, I it's can, pretty easy. I know, <laughs> <laughs> because you, st you start with, it's hard for me to, um... Wait, one moment. I'm back at this boss, but I'm going to die because I don't have a way- Oh, wait, no, I can gain health from that. Well, let me go back- It's random. Yeah, let me go back now and farm this mode up and go back to farm- God, God damn it! The fucking teleporting skeleton! <laughs> this bastard's gonna get me killed, I swear. Um, I can. I think I'll start from the bottom and make my way up because every, every Persona fan knows that Persona 1 is the absolute worst Persona game. There's, like, no doubt in anyone's mind. <laughs> and even, <laughs> even the people who love the old Persona games do not like Persona 1. So, I think I can safely say that is, uh, at the bottom of the list. But then after that, I think it's... Oh, man. That's tough. Because I think Persona 1 is genuinely the only bad Persona game. <laughs> the rest of them are, like... <laughs> Amazing and love and amazing. Ah, shit. All right, let me think about this. I think just because of nostalgia sakes, I because I went to Persona 2 later in life. I'll have to say that next after Persona 1, it is Persona 2, followed by 2 2, and then let me see. If I'm gonna rank it from how I originally played it, then I think original Persona 5 goes there. This is the unroyal version. Yeah. That's I understandable, because the base one is, uh, oof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again, it, it definitely needed improvements. I think that's fair to say for it. Um, and then after that one, I think it goes regular Persona 4, regular Persona 3, and then Persona 3 PSP version. 
And then I think I'm not getting any health anymore. <laughs> For some reason, I think I they've stopped giving you me getting health. hit. <laughs> They're like, listen, we will give you health when you don't get fucking hit anymore. Come on, give me. Okay, I got some back. All right, let's go back. Uh, and then after that, it's a PSP version, and then it's Persona 4 Vita, and then it's actually FES. I really think that, um, you, it's so hard, like, specifically where I was in my life when 3 and 4 dropped, like, my high school year, it was like the best time for those games to drop, because it dealt with a lot of things that were, like, relevant to what, what I was going on with in my high school life. Like, the idea, like, the, the original um, ending of Persona 3 FES, where, which is not the answer, which is actually, like, legit Persona 3's ending, I think it left me emotionally scarred. <laughs> like, I don't think I've actually <laughs> yeah. ever recovered from it. And some of the emotional beats in 4 are very similar, in that I think that they left a mark on me that, like, I'm unable to... Like, I finally realized, like, how do you get a person to... How do you truly realize a person that is gone is fully, like, out of your life? is when something you used to hear every single day is no longer said to you, that is the point where you're like, where the sadness comes in. And I learned that from Persona 4. <laughs> so I think it would probably yeah. go... Um, my number one is FES, because Persona 3 just is that much of like a game changer for me. And then followed up is Vita, which I think is actually up until I think maybe Persona 5 Royal was the best playing um, Persona game. And also Persona 5. Persona 5 be plays much better than all the old Persona games <laughs> by like a large or more large. Alright, <laughs> let's do it. I think I can beat this guy now. Because I farmed all this health. We are talking about Persona. I have the power of Persona on my side. So have you played any of the other ones besides 5? Or was it like you started with 5 and then you oh, no. the other ones? Oh no, I actually... I actually played other ones growing up. Uh, so a lot of people think I only started five, but I've actually played all of them except for one. Mm -hmm. And I haven't played like the different versions of the other ones, basically. So uh, for my ranking, I have a uh, haven't played one, but so based off of two, three, four, five, basically. Uh, be at Ooh. last place. This was probably gonna be controversial. Uh, I put Persona Four. It's a great game. I love it, but it's just, I don't know, it's just the feeling I get from that one compared to the other ones, it just isn't as good to me, but I still love the game. It, like, T.I., Yukiko, they're great, right? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, they also hit the topic with very, very well, the whole um, yeah, LGBT you're fine. topic. Yeah, yeah they got, they got the I LGBT think, stuff. Yeah, I think it's also very, like, not, it's a, it's a very complicated, like, complex story of it, because I really do think you can... The thing that I've always found very cool about stuff like, for example, um, uh, shit, why am I blanking on it right now? Now, there you go, Naotos, the, the Naotos specific story dealing with, like, uh, gender and stuff is that I think it can actually be interpreted multiple ways, where it's like, people who deal with that feel like the specific message that they're going for is not something that really resonates to me but then there's others who go like no i feel like what they're going through is a transition kind of story and then there's people who go like i don't think that this is a transition story but it's actually one about gender politics about how this woman feels like she's not actually equal to the men and the only way to be equal to a man is to be a man and that's fucked up like women should be able to feel the equality regardless of the gender like they don't need to be men and i think it's multiple yeah. ways of handling a subject is much more interesting than the one way of interpreting and i don't see any way as more valid than the other i think they're all valid depending on your um perspective and growing up and stuff like that continue yeah, you're so gonna like, say I, I just got fucking debated yeah. by this fucking <laughs> yeah. i just really like the way they handled it because i feel like that's like the perfect way to handle it because uh naruto i never gonna say their name right uh yeah. and uh kanji right yeah kanji. right kanji kanji's like yeah, maybe okay. one of my favorite Persona characters. He might yeah, actually I love be, him. I love him so much. Just the yeah, board. it's like they handled them so well because like they made that like part of their plot, but they didn't make it where that was the only thing to them. Yeah. If that makes sense, and like they, they handled, they did it, it. It wasn't just there to be there for like equality. It was there because it was part of the story and it made sense and stuff like that. 
Yeah, it was part of their person. And it was also not an easy answer, because even after you defeated their shadow, they're like, I'm still having trouble with this. This is not like a a thing that you can just solve easily. It's something that is constantly evolving with you as a person, because you don't fully... Especially at that age, you don't fully understand and s certain stuff, so you just gotta keep on going for it. It's definitely one of the best kind of things of it, which is a real shame that Persona f the base form of Persona 5 immediately doubled back by having one of the worst <laughs> representations of a gay character ever. <laughs> uh, it's a yeah, shame. So <laughs> Go ahead, continue with I, what you were saying. I, I love 4, and I love the way they handle that stuff, but it's still being my least favorite of the ones I've played. Mm -hmm. uh, but like so once again, that's still like it's, it's still like a nine to a ten out of ten game, like yeah, by no. far. I feel you. Um, then my number three would be Persona Two. Now, granted, that could be nostalgia because I haven't played it in a while. But when I did play it, I was like sixteen, seventeen, or something. I can't remember exactly. But I really loved that game. That game is a lot of fun. I wish it would get remade at some point and like update it so it's a lot easier to go back and play again. And, and then that's where the PSP version was, because that was like a remake, but like question <laughs> some cool big old question marks on the validity of what is considered a PSP remake. It's really more like a yeah. retelling, but yeah, continue on. And that that's the same reason why. Well, that and obviously Royals number one. Like we, we already discussed, this Royals number one. The last part of that story had me fucking floored like i was i'm not gonna go to spoilers but the last boss is so fucking good like i actually that's the best antagonist of all time i don't care what anyone says it was flawless um the whole i don't think it's kasumi this everything about kasumi is great I, th just yeah, to keep it without character. spoiling it but just to say it she's her character and everything is great uh persona 5 is just, i love the world it's so fucking good um, but obviously that puts Persona 3 as number two. Now, I love Persona 3. I think it probably could be at number one. It's just, it's hard to go back and replay it more because it's kind of aged. And the issue is, like, the different versions, they kind of need to fuse them. Because, um, one version, you get, the, you run around and stuff like that. But the thing is, the combat is a bit clunky because you can't control the AI. And then the other version is, like, you can control the AI, but then you lose it's the more of a visual novel. Yeah. yeah, so like they kind of just need to put them together, and I think Persona 3 would be so much better. Because I love the story of Persona 3, I love the characters, I love it. this fucking screaming Persona blowing your brains out is the coolest shit ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most edgy teen, but also the still pretty cool. Yeah, it's just, I love that about it, but it's just, I just need them to remake it and not Nocturne the remake, because I don't know if you saw my rant about the Nocturne remake, but I fucking hated it. Yeah. I, I legitimately think the original version of the game is way better to play than the remake. So once again, for the arbiter of all SMT and Persona takes, Toast was also extremely disappointed <laughs> with the, what they did for the remake in terms of SMT. It just wasn't up to snuff for what, how good that game is. They should have put yeah, more it's... love and care into it. Yeah, it's just because one of my biggest issues is more of a a petty issues. They released the game in 2021 on PC that runs in only 30 FPS. And the issues, a lot of people like, oh, well, a lot of stuff is like gated to the FPS, kind of like how Fallout is, where you change the FPS, it kind of breaks the game occasionally. Yeah. Uh, but the issue with that is like people have modded the emulator files and shit to where you could run the game in 60 FPS, 4K and stuff, and with no issues. So they did that. The lighting, now the graphics. You could say they're better, but I feel like it's too bright, and a lot of it ruins a lot of the atmosphere in the game. Yeah. Like, uh, there's this there's this one scene where, like, in the original game, it's really dark and, like, gritty, and, like, it, it just feels like despair. And then in the remake, it's super bright and blue and shit, and it's like, well, what are y'all doing? Like, what is this? It's just, there's a... They could have done that so much better. I was so hyped for I pre-ordered the deluxe edition as soon as it went up. For me and my friend Troco, so we could get it early and do like a review for it and stuff. Mm -hmm. I I opened it the day it came out, played it for like an hour or two. I was like, no, and just refunded it. <laughs> I was like, no, this this is fucked. <laughs> yeah, no, I can. It was a very sad day because, <laughs> you know, as much as I um, will love to make fun of people who love SMT and hate on Persona because they have this weird hate boner, and I love to see them fail. 
what actually happened to SMT was like a fucking dirt. You never want to see that happen to a series. It was just, yeah. It was just illogical what they did, and I hope that's Nocturne that. is also like real quick. Nocturne is also like one of the greatest games of all time. It like is. it's so fucking good. And then just to see what they did to the remake was so sad. It's like the the, the Godfather meme. Look what they did to my look how they massacred my boy. It's what they yeah. did. Oh god, I'm trying to farm some health and then hopefully get to the next boss. I was able to beat the suit of armor somehow. It took a lot of, like, <laughs> just taking all his attacks yeah. to the face. Oh, real but, quick, have you played Strikers? I have not played Strikers. I haven't been able to oh, buy it yet. So, story-wise, it's... Yeah, go ahead. I, I don't know if he's spoilers to say, but, spo like, story-wise, it's basically just another P5. Basically, like, when you really break it down into simplistic terms, this is P5 again. But the gameplay in that game is so much fun to me. Uh, I I have, like, 300 hours in on Steam right now. <laughs> like, because I went through it. I'm still working on it here and there, but I'm going through and max out every character's stats to 99. I'm almost done. I probably, like, two more hours of grinding I haven't done. But, dude, that's the most fun I've had playing a Persona game. But I still... Wouldn't put it against above Royal because Royal is so good because of the story. It's just the story in Royal is so just out of this world good. I remember people being kind of like, "Why are you?" Because it takes place after Persona Five. Specifically, they like said like this does not take place after Royal. It takes place in the Persona yeah. Five timeline. And they're like, "Why would you do that?" <laughs> that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, and that's the weird thing is because of. Uh, I'm trying to think of how to say it without getting into spoilers, but there was a couple of similarities between uh, Strikers and Royal. Mm -hmm. And the thing with it is, like, there's a theory going around. I actually think that might be it, is that they kind of gave both the parts of the people, like, um, a base script to go off of. And they kind of made Strikers and Royal in, like, separate divisions. Because it, it makes sense because... Um, <laughs> this fucking guy... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. Um, it's, it's nice to meet you. I need it. <laughs> oh god, he's fucking rocking. <laughs> Yo, he's shredding. He shredded too hard. Damn. Oh, can't continue. Because uh, there's a there's a lot of um, similarities. Like the new character. Because this should be sport. New character has red hair. Yeah. Uh, one of the bosses. Okay, I'm not gonna go to that one. That that one would be spoilers in a way, not straight spoilers, but like suggested spoilers. But one of the bosses is pretty similar, and it's just a lot of like little small things that are too similar and too coincidental for it to not that not to be a possibility, right? It's just well, once you played them, I think you understand what I'm trying to say because I I just try to dance around the spoilers because I keep forgetting not everyone's played Royal and all this stuff, and I. My friends are joined VC and start talking about Persona. It's like, oh yeah, I fucking love the last palace. The boss was so sick, and I say the name and everything's like, what? And I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful with that. JRPGs are yeah. fucking long. So it takes them a while too. Yeah. Also, as much as big as Persona 5 has gotten, I think it still has not reached that zeitgeist of like a Final Fantasy where like a bunch of people have played through it all. I think that's actually pretty tough to um, do, but I think slowly but surely, maybe by Persona 6 when it comes out in 9 years, we might be <laughs> able to say yo, this is the new JRPG where everyone goes, yo, this shit's tight. Or maybe it'll just continue, actually, continue to be Final Fantasy I'm actually, 14. Uh, I'm actually scared for a Persona 6 if they do ever make it. it. It's a weird reason to be scared because Persona 5 is just the aesthetic to it and the feeling of it is like I think they really just fucking nailed that. Like, it's so good. And I just don't know how a Persona 6 will top that. I don't know how they're going to top the uh, the whole aesthetic to the game. Because, like, the whole Persona 5 aesthetic is like a whole thing in itself. There's people that haven't even touched the games that know what the Persona 5 aesthetic is. It's tough. I mean, they definitely looked at what 3 and 4 did and said, let's go even further. And to continue that yeah. on is extremely tough. It's just, it's similar to like, it's the problem between Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII, where people like, will nonstop say like, Final Fantasy VII, one of the greatest, definitely defined an entire thing, and then they go, 
Final Fantasy VIII was also a game that came right after Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. <laughs> So I think it'd make a little bit more sense for them to do a Persona 3 remake and then kind of do a actual Persona 6. Because then with Persona 3 remake, they can get people used to the idea of maybe something not as flashy. Though maybe what we'll, we'll instead get is 4K headshots, which is maybe the funniest thing to <laughs> me. I don't know See, how you... I don't what? know, man. I want the Persona 3 remake, but after what they did to Nocturne, I don't want it. Because if they do the same thing they did to Nocturne, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> I'm actually gonna be so pissed, especially how much they tease it, bro. I bought the hundred and sixty dollar Persona Three watch. I have that on pre-order. I love Persona <laughs> Three. If they fuck that up like they did Nocturne, I'm gonna be fucking furious, dude. Yeah, no, it has to be from the ground up. You can't salvage that PS2 game. There's just too, as much as I love it. There's too many jank ass systems in it. It yeah. was also a technically budget game because that game came out during the 360 era. This is not a PS2 game. <laughs> this is a 360 <laughs> era after everyone was done with the PS2. Let's try and make something. But I think yeah. that's, that's it for the the Spooky Nights. I tried my best in Parody World and we made it to the third world. I'm going to consider that a success in my book. <laughs> so thank you very much yeah, for my guest for joining me here for 13 Nights. Uh, any last things you want to say to the people? Anything you want to promote? Anything like that? I don't think I've asked any of my other guests this. You're the first person to ever ask this. <laughs> yeah, let's go! Drake's in the chat. Oh, uh, well, look, I work for this people. 5-9 Gaming, go check that out. You know? <laughs> okay, let me stop. Uh, play Persona, bro. This Play Persona. That shit's sick. Uh, subscribe to the homie Wookie here. If y'all happen to get here from the algorithm in some way. Uh, subscribe yeah. to the homie. He's fucking cool. That's true. Oh, and that's cool. about it. One of the very few people who are willing to completely tank their channel for having fun with friends. Yeah, I respect the grind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it. it's working for you. Like, I mean, obviously it isn't like you're skyrocketing anything, but I mean, you're still getting growth and that's it. Yeah, it's true. Slowly but surely, man. One of these days, I'm gonna be one of those dudes who has 3,000 and then I'm gonna be like, holy shit, where do I go from here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They just keep doing the same thing, get to the 4,000, the 5,000. Exactly, and by then I'll be 50. And <laughs> 5,000 by 50, Maybe. says Wookie. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your spooky night, and I'll be back with you guys for more 13 Nights of Halloween. Goodbye. Say goodbye. See y'all later, gamers. <laughs>